I have $150,000 saved for retirement. When can I retire? Well, that's what we're going to look at today on the channel, because if you look at the average saved for retirement, we're going to look at age 50. We are not that far off of what the average saved in retirement savings is. So it's a pretty good chance that you might be close to 50 or a little bit over 50 and have $150,000 saved for retirement. You ready to get into this? Let's go. All right. So I've got Tim. Tim's from Idaho. And I'm calling this the David versus Goliath scenario because Tim has done everything right when it comes to saving. Now, I know you might be thinking, Drew, he only has $150,000 saved for retirement. Well, Tim has had some curveballs thrown his way in life. He's gone through a divorce. He's also worked really hard to have zero debt. So he has a $250,000 home with zero mortgage. So most of his money has been going towards the home to pay off the debt and not to his retirement savings. And again, he went through a divorce and anytime you go through a divorce and you might know this, the assets get split and it's really hard to get back on your feet, but he's done it. So we're 50 years old. We have $150,000 saved for retirement. We have a salary of $85,000 gross per year. Social Security at 67 is going to be 2658, so 2658. Now that's at his full retirement age. So if he claims Social Security at 67, he's going to get 100% of his full retirement benefit. We'll talk a little bit more about Social Security as we get through the scenario. His contribution to his 401k right now is 10%. He's putting 10% of his $85,000 into his 401k, he's getting a 3% match from his company on the 401k. So about 13% is going into his 401k. Now a good rule of thumb is you want to be saving somewhere between 10 and 15% of your gross annual salary every year for retirement, whether that's in a 401k, an IRA, a 403b, maybe you do a mixture of 5% into your 401k to get your company match and another 5% into a Roth IRA or 5% into your 401k and 5% into a brokerage account, whatever it might be, you want to save somewhere between 10 and 15% of your gross. Now for Tim, he's been doing 10%. And he's getting a 3% match, so that puts us at 13%. So we're right where we want to be. I would like to get it to 15 to 20%, but we're working with what we're at right now. And again, he's doing a really good job. So we have a $250,000 home and there's no debt. Okay, now, Tim, when he got divorced, he took on a mortgage and he took on some credit card debt. And so because of that, he really wanted to work himself out of the hole before he started to save for retirement. That was just his thought process. And now we've met and we're gonna work through getting him to retirement, through retirement, and protect his ability to stay in retirement. So we've got $150,000 saved for retirement, and this is inside of his 401k. He does have about $10,000 in the bank, okay? Now he's 50 years old and he's asking the question, when can I retire? He understands that he cannot retire at 55. He's not going to retire at 60. He might not even retire at 65. He's just asking the question, Drew, when can I retire based on conservative projections? If we get market returns of 8, 9, 10, 15%, that's great. Maybe I can retire earlier. But what about some conservative market projections so that I can really answer the question, can I retire? So we've got a 5% and a 3% over on this side. And over here, we're going to have his salary net with taxes and contribution and his expenses. Okay. So what we're looking at is a couple different things. We're 50 years old and we have $150,000 saved. We're going to look at a 5% rate of return on the money in the stock market. So the $150,000 in his 401k, we're going to project out a 5% rate of return. Now I realize that that is very low. And what I would much rather him do at 50 in his 401k, understanding that we're probably going to have to work 10, 15, 20 years is to put that money in the S and P 500, a very simple S and P 500 index fund, a hundred percent, 
try to grow it as much as possible. Now, the S&P 500, the last 50 years, has averaged about 10%. It's 8% with inflation. So we are projecting 3% lower than what I'm actually recommending that he does in his 401k. And the reason that we are projecting at a lower level is because I want to be conservative in our projections. Obviously, if things change as we update the EKG for Tim, we can make changes to his retirement plan. But if we project low and it comes in high, we're going to high five and chest bump. But if we project high and it comes in low, he's going to try to put my head on a stick somewhere, right? So we need to make sure that we're doing this in a conservative fashion. Now, listen, if you would like a financial EKG, all the information is in the description below. Visit our website. We'd love to help you. So we're looking at a 5% rate of return for the money in the market. We're going to look at 3% inflation. So we're going to put inflation on his expenses, right? Because you know your expenses go up whether you work or not. We talk a lot about on this channel retired, people who are retired and looking at inflation. But listen, I'm working. I went to Costco the other day. I see inflation. The Fed might not see inflation, but I do. And so our expenses are going to have inflation on it too. And we're going to look at 3% for the rest of his life. So his income is $4,700 net. Now, let me explain net to you. Net is after taxes. So state, local, federal, after FICA, Social Security, after Medicare. Okay, so that's net plus his contribution of 10%. So $4,700 net is what we're looking at. Net minus expenses is $1,275. So this is what we have left over at the end of each month. Now, I'm not saying that he can't take that money that's left over at the end of each month and repurpose that back into maybe a brokerage account or maybe into a Roth IRA or something like that. But what I would like to see Tim do is to build up his bank account. I don't believe that's enough. What if his AC goes out? That wipes out the, out the 10K pretty quick, right? What if he needs a new car? That wipes out the 10K pretty quick. What I'd like to see Tim do now that he's really worked hard to be debt free is to protect himself, protect his debt freedom by building up his emergency fund. You know, Dave Ramsey has it right. You wanna build up this emergency fund. I'd like to see 12 to 24 months in emergency fund savings because who knows what the future holds. Now that doesn't mean it has to sit in the bank and earn 0.01. You can put it in a high yield money market. You can, once you build this up, siphon a little bit off, put it into a CD or put it into something that's gonna earn some interest. But I just want to see, as a single person, would like to see him build up his emergency fund. And once that gets built up, then we can repurpose some of that money back into the overall market. So from 50 to 60, now we are really working hard because he just paid off his house. We've gotten rid of all the debt. We want to grow these assets. So from 50 to 60, our $150,000 grows to 437,675. That's a lot of money. Contributions, rates of return, we're doing pretty good. Now at 60, we have $437,675. Now the thing that's not gonna change for Tim are his expenses. So we've got his expenses kind of down to the bare bone. And, and keep in mind, there's one expense for Tim that's really expensive and that's health insurance. And so because of the cost of health insurance, Tim is gonna work to age 65, kind of like no matter what, because he doesn't want to pay for health insurance on the exchange. So we know we're gonna to work to somewhere right here at a minimum because his expenses are kind of bare boned and he doesn't wanna add 800 to $1,000 a month in health insurance. So 437,675 is where we're at today or at 60. We've got the same rate of return, 5% is our rate of return and 3% is our inflation number. So our income, $5,120 is our net income. We're growing our income about 1%. So he sees about a 1% raise every year. Our expenses have gone up by 3%, 4,724. So look at that. Expenses went from 3425 to 4724. His income went from 4700 to 5120. So now each month we're only saving 396. You see that? That's inflation, right? His his income is not outpacing inflation, even inflation at 3%. And so 60 to 70, at 70, we have 802, $603. Now, 
I'm not saying Tim's going to work till 70. He's 50. This is 20 years from now. Like I'm 38, 48, 50. I don't even know where I'm going to be at 58 years old. I mean, probably going to be doing this, but like, who knows? Who knows where the market's going to be? So when we look at this, we might be able to retire earlier, depending on what market rates of return do. So we always have to be thinking about that. Again, look at this 150 to 802. And I want to encourage you, if you're younger, if you're watching this, you're in your 30s and 40s, Tim's making $85,000 a year. He gets a 1% increase on his salary. He's putting 10% into his, his contribution into his 401k. He gets a 3% match. And do you see what compound interest did over 20 years? That's God's greatest gift outside of Jesus, compound interest. You name something that's a greater gift than, than compound interest outside of Jesus, and, and I'll talk to you, but that's pretty darn good. So 802, 603 at 70. Now what we're going to do at 70 is we're going to ratchet down our rate of return. It's going to 4%. And the reason we're going to go to 4% is because now that we've retired, we want to be a little bit more conservative. We want our investment allocation to correctly position ourselves so that we're not facing the volatility. I call it the Walt Disney World Railroad versus Space Mountain. If you've ever been on any roller coaster, you know as soon as you get on, like this is going to be terrifying or thrilling, however you feel about roller coasters. You know you're going to get off, but you don't really know how you're going to get there. And Space Mountain at Disney World, it's in the dark. And you feel like you're flying. Now, it's only going like 35 miles an hour. But in the dark, with the sounds, you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm in space and I'm flying. You just don't know where you're going to get off. What we want to do is transition from Space Mountain to the Walt Disney World Railroad. Like, we know we're getting off at Main Street. We know we're getting off at Tomorrowland. We know we're getting off at Frontierland. Like, we know we're getting off at these stops. It's, 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 it's set up. And we want to do that. Now, we're not giving up growth in retirement because we need our assets to last forever, but we just want to be more, what's the word I'm looking for? We want to be more consistent with our overall returns when it comes to retirement investing. Now, inflation is going to stay the same. We're going to keep that at 3%. And so if you look at this, now we're flip-flopping because this is adding money. Now we're taking money out. So now our expenses are the top number where they were the bottom number before. Our expenses are our top number and Social Security's kicking on at 70. Now, Tim's gonna take Social Security at 70, which is $3,295. So, I know what most of you are thinking, or maybe some of you are thinking, why didn't he take it at 67 and invest it? You know, when we looked at the projections of taking the money out and investing it, it didn't make sense at this point. Here's, here's a reason why. If you take your Social Security and you're age 67, or your full retirement age, you can take it and make as much money working as you want. A lot of people or a lot of financial advisors will tell you to take it, or money people on YouTube, will tell you to take it and invest it. But when you take it out of Social Security and you invest it, is that return guaranteed? No, it's not. And you might say, well, he could put it in a high yield money market. Making what, 4%? Maybe, four to five, that's great. But if he leaves it in Social Security, he's gonna get an 8% gain every year. Tim's single, okay? At this point, he might, might meet somebody, but he's single. And we want to maximize his social security payment because it's on me, myself, and I, right? His social security income's on me, myself, and I. So if we can get to 70, he's gonna get 124% of his overall social security benefit. So at 67, you get 100% of your social security benefit. If you claim at 62, you get 70%. But if you wait until 70, you get 124%. That's pretty darn good, right? So 65.18 is his expenses. 32.95 is his social security. So his, his retirement income need is 3,223. This is what has to come out of his portfolio. That's what's gotta come out of this 802. And so if we do that for 10 years, at 70, he's at 800,000. At 80, we're at 390,000. We're almost down, we're basically down about $410,000. That's a big drop between 70 and 80. And we're essentially out at 85. Now, again, I'm using a very conservative 4% projection. Now, there are some things that Tim can do to help make this better. Budget. He can look at his budget. He's very good at his budget. Can we increase our contribution? Can we increase our contributions? That's one of the things he can do. Keep in mind, he's got this excess money, but I'd like him to build up this bank. Really want to see this get built up. But 
if he wants to get it to maybe 15, 20,000, start shucking more money into his 401k and we can see more growth. Obviously, we're gonna invest this 401k more towards the S&P 500. So we're not going to probably get the 5% that we're projecting. We're probably gonna get seven, 8%. And we've talked through some of those numbers and what that would look like. And he might be able to retire earlier doing that and the money's gonna last a little longer. Again, I don't wanna guarantee anything. So I'm gonna come in on the low side. That's a couple things he could do. Now, another thing that he can think about doing is he can look at working part-time. Oh, I know, I just said something that's gonna like throw everybody into a tizzy because he's literally working until 70. Tim's a pretty handy guy. He's actually very handy. He could do things that I only wish I could do with a screwdriver. So he could work part-time in retirement. He could be a handyman. Or one of the things that we talked about was retiring earlier from his current job, maybe at that 65 level, and working as a handyman, making less, and doing that longer. So that's something that we can look at in the EKG. So what if he retired at 65, and we said, okay, from 65 to 75, you're gonna do part-time work, you know, doing your handyman stuff. So instead of stopping at 70, we're gonna stop at 65, which means the 401k contributions are gonna stop. But if he's self-employed, we can start putting money into another investing vehicle, and we're gonna do that a little bit longer. So those are things that we can work through to make sure this works for Tim. Keep in mind, 85 at zero, male mortality table right now is 84. Now, I hope he lives to 100, and we also have the house, right, that's appreciating. We're showing a 1% projection on the house. And the only reason I use 1% is because in Idaho, I have no idea what the real estate market's gonna do in Idaho. I live in Florida. I have no idea what the real estate market in Florida's gonna do. So we put a 1% projection on the house. So if we get to 80, right, we can do a reverse mortgage, sell the house, we could rent, move into independent living. So there's a lot of things that he can do to make sure that this money doesn't run out, okay? So I hope this video has helped you. David versus Goliath, I've got $150,000 saved. When can I retire? Thank you so much for watching. God bless, bye-bye.